Hello and welcome back. I'm Arumba. Thank you for joining me. Let's play some more of our campaign at E4. Uh, we're really starting to slip now on army tradition because we don't have fully maintained forts and we've been kind of not doing wars. So let's fix that by declaring wars. We're also going to spy, sure, on Austria on the off chance we actually want to go to war with him. So let's see where we're at with like a French, uh, a French war deck. Kind of sad that they all stopped being free cities after all that work. You know, now they're just regular vassals. Right, so Austria is guaranteed by France, but if we attack France directly, we don't fight Austria. So if we wanted to do this, we would just attack France, then fight it, then attack Austria, and we could reset the truce with France. Potentially, which would be fun. So let's do that. The war goal is Cambrai. Ready, set, go. I don't think... For whatever reason, the Ottomans wanted to join. They are 5,194 ducats in debt. That war with Russia where they lost three quarters of a million troops. That really cost them some stuff. Okay, so our half stacks are going to be capable of sieging down level two forts. We're also pretty well drilled in most cases. These two are not. You know what? I think I'm going to have just two stacks. We're just going to take two combat stacks. Just comprised of two half stacks each. We don't have the best dice, uh, the best general rolls. We're only at 6 to 16 plus 3, so 9 to 19. But I do need a general or two, so who shall lead? Let's go nuts. I want like five. I want to go all the way to max professionalism, so I want five generals. Five generals. The the last huzzah. Peepo happy. Peepo. Whoa, 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 whoa. If you talk that fast, I can't read the names and write them. Peepo happy. All right, Peepo. Peepo is happy. Great. Cleaner bear. Cleaner bear. With a capital B. Cleaner bear. Nice. That's a great roll, considering that we don't have perfect army tradition anymore. Nicely done, sir. Mr. Tallahassee. Uh, lowercase t. Tala. Tala. Hosi. Tala Hosi. Not great. Mr. Skitrez. Skitrez. Nice. Four siege pips. Cool. And the final roll to get that last little bit of stuff. Rocket Lion 64. And actually, the very last bonus is the general cost minus 50. So this is where now you essentially, instead of rolling one general, once you get to 100 professionalism, you just roll two generals every time and keep the better of the two. At least that's how I deal with it in my head. Instead of just treating it like a discount, just treat it like a... Um, um, what's it called in D&D? &D? Uh, roll, roll with advantage. Think of it as a roll with advantage. Yeah, we're still off by 0 0.88. By 0 0 0.12. So I guess we'll roll one more. Why not? Who wants it? Come on. <laughs> Narcotic Wizard. That's a good name. <laughs> Obviously, we're way over the leader limit. We're double it. Army drill gain gets doubled, so I think army drill gain already was multiplied by a little bit because of our elite regiments. Army drill gain is at plus 40, but that's going to update now with the professionalism to give us another plus 100. These guys can drill quite quickly, basically. Okay, so if we keep these generals, we'll be losing five monarch points a month. I'm going to have to fire the worst of you. I'm sorry. That one guy, Shadow, you just don't quite cut it anymore, sir. And even though, Talahosi, your roll was pretty good, you only have one siege pip, and that's just... not acceptable, man. I'm sorry. Narcotic Wizard, pretty good, but not for our country. Sorry. Lissy Smoak, you have been replaced by the newer people. You're not good enough. And M-A-O-O... M-A-O-0666. Uh, I can't keep you. Sorry. Sorry. You, you just lack shock pips. It's just not doable. Alright, so we're gonna have Douchebag Dave. We're going to have 
Skitrez will take Cleaner Bear and Peepo Happy or Rocket Lion. I like your Siege Pips. I feel like Siege Pips are going to be more important than combat in this. Rocket Lion, you're the backup. You're like a, you're probably our best combat general right now. Although Cleaner Bear's got 5-6. We're going to do that. Okay, so we'll stay at 5 out of 5 leaders. Hopefully we siege quickly enough that we can actually get back up to Max Army Tradition. We're spying on France. We've activated our inland routes. Let's see how we do. Against France, we have 12 day siege ticks. We're going to pile in. Let's get on to Paris. And let's mark the date. Save the date. We've recently sent another diplomat. We can't send another one until November 26th. So we declared the war in October. October 26th. 1660. A date which shall live in infamy. I want to tell everyone to be passive for a second because I want priority on that fort. After the other forts. Picardy has fallen. Doesn't hurt that he was distracted by his other recent wars. He's probably going to be pretty easy to kill. Although it is France and he does have Elan, so we're going to keep most of our troops side by side. Just in case. And this is only two combat stacks. Two. That's 140,000 troops. So this is right now half of our army. We're using half. Out of a potential 569. We do have manpower, and if we wanted to now, we could slacken for 47,000 per click. Pretty solid. Looks like drill-wise, we should be drilling in our capital, actually. And did that update? 37 day siege of his capital is pretty good. Army drill gain? Yes. Plus 140. Get these guys drilled up. There's some of the French army. What are the numbers? 374,000 infantry on our side. Uh, 110,000 cavalry. 270,000 artillery. 50,000 artillery for him. So we're about triple on infantry. 6x or so, 5x or so on, on cav, and 5x on artillery. And uh, more importantly though, we have the, the most important advantage. Which you guys are aware of, right? We have Paris? No, that's not the most important advantage. The most important advantage over any AI? The human brain. <laughs> we're not an AI. That's our best advantage over an AI, is that we're not an AI. Because <laughs> AIs are stupid, yo. Doesn't matter how well you build them, they are not usually close to comparable. 11 day siege of Anjou. Army tradition was at like 88, now we're back up to... No, was it like 80, wasn't it? We're on the rise, we're at 84. You only get army tradition from sieging forts, so I think we'll just beeline for the forts. Because I want forts. I want zone of control stuff. Look at this, there's like... That's a lot of dudes. A lot of little dudes walking around. Austria's getting killed by the Ottomans? Yeah. And during this war, we're probably gonna end up at, uh... I mean, we're gaining... one Imperial Authority every two months now. Not gonna take long. Oh wait, we found an actual army, but we won! That's right, we beat Elan. Despite the fact, this is... <laughs> People ask me all the time, why do you have so many forts, right? They look at the economy and they say, oh my god, you're spending 106 ducats on forts. Why do you do that? Well, because we have more or like comparable morale to France with negative prestige. Even though he's got a golden era active and Elan. We have no national ideas that increase morale of armies, whatsoever. We don't have defensive ideas. We, we're competing 
with Francis Elan. And all we have is Defender of the Faith, Power Projection, Army Tradition. And then we have our religion, Saints Accept Prayers. If we had positive prestige right now, we would have more morale than he does. In fact, let's just... Let's just take a morale of Army's advisor to teach him who's boss. There, bam, Netherlands wins. Elan, suck it. We add uh, Paris to the Empire and then give it back to him. We could do that. I mean, that's that's basically the way to expand at this point. Before doing uh, Renovati and Perry, would be to just. Um, I mean, you could do that to everyone. Attack the country, take the capital, for it, add it to the empire, do that trick. So this was the seventh rank great power. War was declared. It was like October. So it's been about a year. And these guys are all princes, except for Genoa. That's fine. Hey, Austria. Hey, France. You ready for round two? Remember what I just said about the, uh, the best advantage that we have? Is that we, we have a human brain? France somehow thinks this is a good idea. <laughs> okay. <laughs> hey, France, how do you feel about fighting again? Okay, sounds like a great idea. Let's do it. Yeah, it's a 10 day siege. Yeah, sure. Let's go back over to Finsteer. We'll have this army head to there. We'll have this army go through Paris, then go to Lyonnais. Uh, this reminds me of all the tricks we could be doing from, uh, like, E4 land. We abused the, the French. You guys remember the E4 land trick that I showed him that we did? France is an AI and, and we were Provence and we wanted to become France, so we needed to kill France and France is really hard to kill. So we bankrupted him in one war. If I remember correctly, we managed to get, I think, four or five other player nations to join us. In my my little plot my little strategy basically all you have to do like let's assume, assume that we are multiplayer right now ai won't do alliances while you're in a war but players can so let's say for example spain were an ai sorry not an ai they were a player if if i wanted to i could just say hey how about i ally you call you into this war and then the trick we did was that we occupied all the forts transferred all the forts to Spain, in this case, the player nation of Spain, had them mothball the forts, we positioned troops on all the forts, and then we had them use the war score from the occupation of the forts to piece out France for money and war reps. And then, because they left the war separately, those lands that were occupied by them became returned to France. But because we had them mothball the forts first, the mothballed forts fell after just one month. We then transferred them to another player, say, for example, you know, Scotland. We then had them multiple the forts. Peace out France for money and war reps. You do that four, five, six times, all of a sudden he's paying 50, 60, 70% of his monthly income in war reps. And he's like, you know, five loans in debt for each person that you do it with. Instantaneously go bankrupt. Dead. And there's nothing, I mean, you could do that <laughs> basically every single time you fight any AI ever in a multiplayer campaign. Yearly Prestige, the South German Organ Tradition. That's a lot of ducats, yo. No, I want my ducats. Those are my ducats. Can't have them. Nope, I have not heard about the Grand Slam Party yet. 
Neither has Flory Worry though, so I'm not as worried as I could be. If he had heard about it and I hadn't, then I'd be pretty certain that I'm not invited. But it does sound like uh, there's just no... They haven't invited anybody yet. Would I be willing to pay my own way there? I honestly would, but unfortunately the tickets went on sale. And uh, they, they sold out within like less than a day. The same day that they went out, that they were available, they sold out. So, unless Paradox invites me, I, I don't get to go. There is no available spot. Bizarre that they haven't told you. I would agree, but I... You know, we don't always know what's going on with Paradox. They've probably got a lot of other stuff planned or budgeted. Things that they've got to work out. Who knows? I mean, they're a company, you know? So, our individual war score with France is already at 70. You still thinking this is a good idea, France? He's also allied to Kutai. No more guarantees. But they've decided to revoke the guarantee. Weird! So odd. And with that being said, we are at... 50.6 and we have 62 princes in favor of the final reform so that being said let's just peace out click a throne inherited boom now our income is bad because we have way too many troops uh, and then there's like a lot of management that needs to go through to fix all this crap but yeah that color burns like our name is up in Scandinavia instead of inside the actual empire <laughs> all right cool man still the worst click of the game pretty much is yeah it's not worth clicking like ever I like how it says Imperial Britain though that's cool Imperial Balkans Yes. The correct time to click the button is definitely once you've conquered the entire world, then you click it. You don't ever really want to do that click in the middle of a campaign. It's not worth it. I would I would just delete all of the armies. Get the manpower back from all of them that I'm not gonna do take the time to actually do that though, because we've got our own stacks. There's even mercs out there, wow. Some of our subjects were like super Super trying to help. Look at this massive stack of crap. Hundred and twenty six. We have a thirty seven stack. That's probably from somebody big, but it's not one of my stacks, so just kill them all. Once we get below the force limit, I, I am just kind of curious to see where we sit economically. Also, <laughs> it's kind of fun as like a like a fun thought process. To, to consider. We just had like 61 princes, right? And we clicked a button. Now there are no princes and it's just us. We went from having the potential for 61 times probably at least three or so. 61 times three is what? 180? We had room for like 180 generals. Now we have room for five. Just five. This entire country. How outrageous is that? Alright, so without being over the force limit, we're still making money, but not as much money as before. And of course, we were still subsidizing the deportation center that... You don't really need that. 
Okay, let's check some final numbers, but I think we're gonna wrap this campaign up. Integrating all of that land... Granted, the autonomy is probably very high, and also, this is another reason why you don't click the button. 84 territories, all that development is now at 75% autonomy, instead of 0%. So, we don't have state slots for any of this. It's just a bad click. So it's such a bad click, man. But, uh... We went from like 1,700 manpower a month to 2,400. We barely even gained manpower. And we had more force limit before the click. Crazy, right? Anyway. That's the run, as always. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this campaign. I'll see you again in the next one. If you're sticking around on Twitch, then stick around on Twitch. Otherwise... Check out the next video on YouTube. Cheers. Thanks, guys.